He got fucked up in the knob. Okay. <laughs> we are... <laughs> I'm still we are... in the war, you prick. I know you are. Okay, we're back. Uh, Rick Wilson, will there be negative consequences for Republican politicians like Christie, Chris Christie, who have endorsed Donald Trump? Well, Christie gets to fetch his shine box every day when Donald Trump summons him now. He does look... And, um, yeah. and he is a guy... And I think a lot of these people are going to pay a price for it. And I think that I think that that Donald Trump is not a transactional politician. He's all about the bottomless ego need of Donald Trump, and that's why anybody who's endorsing him, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to get something out of this. I'm going to get an appointment. I'm going to get some some favor from Trump. No, when mm -hmm. he's done, he's done with them. Right. That that moment on the airport tarmac where he said, "Go get on the plane," that was just the that was the coldest diss I've ever seen in politics. Okay, um, Bernie, does Bernie Sanders have a re have a realistic proposal for Wall Street reform? I think he uh, has more rhetoric than reality. Actually, Hillary Clinton has a very specific and detailed <laughs> proposal to use some of the powers that are there in the bill, uh, as the New York Times editorial said. Um, I, I do not think that uh, simply saying break up the banks, look, I just did a piece. They don't tell us to what, to what low level you need to do it. And in fact, uh, we have in the bill powers that have not yet been used and no, I, I do not... You're talking about the Dodd-Frank bill? Yeah. I, and you are the Frank in that. I know, but the only... I don't say that... So you know something about it, I would... Yeah, say. but yeah. the only person in history who could refer to himself in the third person and not seem like a pompous jerk was Charles de Gaulle. So I never, <laughs> I never refer to myself. But the point is, that I, what, what I've seen, I've looked, I've looked carefully at what uh, Senator Sanders has said. And by the way, he was there. He voted for the bill. I don't... You know, he, he was in the Senate... Uh, when we passed the bill and, and was very supportive of it. Um, but I have not seen specifics that go beyond what we have done there. Okay. Esperanza, what can you tell us about your work with Free the Slaves? Ooh. Well, I didn't know slavery was so prevalent. So that There is slavery it. still in the world. A Absolutely. lot of it, actually. Uh, yes, it's, it is amazing and horrific. And but... in our own backyards and in a lot of the products that we are acclimated to using. It's shocking. So when I heard about that, I said, okay, I want to align myself with these people and folks who are listening to me, I don't need to hear about this. And what this. countries are we talking about? Where is it worst? Worse in India and Bangladesh, and but it happens almost everywhere. I'm sure it happens everywhere, unfortunately. Right. So. There's all sorts of forms of slavery, yeah. right? Of right. course, of course, Saudi. yeah, yeah. It's Saudi Arabia, yeah. What do you think about Obama criticizing them in the Atlantic? I, amazing. It was I, about time. Yeah, about time. Talk about it. Right, talk yeah. About it. yeah. yeah. That was a pretty stark. I mean, that was a pretty stark read. That time, I mean, somebody did yeah. in America. Right? It, I, mean, it, I think we're. I think we're all. I think th there's a bipartisan moment where we're we're getting past that infatuation. Right. So okay. And um, not that they need to listen. No. Michael, I mean, what? you just have no leverage. You no. have very limited leverage. With who? Saudi Arabia. But we, I think we have more leverage than ever because we don't need oil like we used to. We yeah. are the leading oil. Producer. But they don't need you. But we, you have proven yourselves impotent in the Middle East. We have? Oh, really? Well, I mean, yes, well, we have, but uh, have who's been, more, who's, have you, who's more impotent than Saudi Arabia? <laughs> it's their own backyard, and they won't even send troops to kill ISIS. Well, right. They're the ones who should be doing it. Why are we doing They're it? They're paying the bills to kill ISIS. They're fighting the yeah. war in Yemen. <laughs> They're fighting the great religious war in Yemen. You don't want to get in the middle of yeah, this, yeah. do you? Trust, <laughs> trust me, you don't want to. No. You're the smartest it's woman a, I've met all night. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, you know, <laughs> we've never had... Le we've never what a great had compliment to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all night, all huh, Michael? Was shut up and get out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and where were you earlier? Yeah. Uh, hey, God damn. No, okay. look, we've never had less influence in the Middle East than we do now. You know, and we are not the worst for it. I do not think right. that this is America's role. It's not our need, it's and it's not. not possible for us to bring peace there. So well, I look. Forget energy politics. Be... I'm not talking energy. Forget politics. energy politics. I'm about I say to bring go order green, to... go hard, and go now. You know. That's but not... there are people dying there. And How can we stop it, Mike? What people... can we do to stop it? We can. Sweet bugger all. What? Nothing. Virtually nothing. I agree. Virtually nothing. So, but and, you know and we what? Make it worse when we try. You know, in we so should... many ways, you've contributed so much to this problem, and it's washing up on all our shores. Hey, I voted it's a moral what? responsibility. But, you, but what to do? What? I, I, it would make it worse. I to withdraw. We, I voted against yes, the responsibility. I, to withdraw. But Absolutely. I don't see that we can do anything. How about a little tough love, right? 
It's the Republicans are always for personal responsibility. What about personal responsibility for all those countries that are surrounding ISIS who say they are enemies of ISIS, but we don't make them fight ISIS? Why are we leading this coalition? They have planes. I know we sold them to them. In fairness, though, su the support of Saudi Arabia has been a bipartisan fact of life in sure. this country yeah. for 45 Absolutely. years or so. That doesn't make it a good but now, well, I know, I know. I'm just, I want to right. make sure that it's not just on my party's no. head. <laughs> right. No, no it's It not. falls on us all. I that mean, falls on us all. The Bush is the ones who actually held hands with them. Literally. But, but our, our willful refusal I mean, to understand the deeper stories of what's going on in the Middle East, our misconceptions, our thinking that it's just the way we want it to be, I mean, right. we should just plain stay out. We have no idea. Right. What we only make it worse, yeah. And, and you know, the reason why we don't is because we always have to big ourselves up that we're the indispensable nation, yes. and we're not. It's Russia. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not either. Uh, it's dude, certainly more dude, Putin just played us all for fools. No, he didn't. He, it was a master stroke. Excuse me, but he stepped that... in. Wait, you're a Putin fan? No. I'm, I'm a huge Putin fan. If you are into Whoa. global power Whoa. politics... You're totally contradicting <laughs> yeah. yourself. You acknowledge that we have no great interest there, and then you complain that we didn't do anything. There's nothing that we could accomplish and nothing that Putin we didn't accomplish. And at least Putin Putin's knows what he's after. Putin is after a secure naval base on the Mediterranean and a new airfield. And air what's field. he going to do with it? And, well, he's secured it. And he's achieved yes. it, and he's got in, and he's got out Fine. with relatively we have low had, cost. We have more bases, excuse me, let me finish. We have more bases in the Middle East than he does, and there so are no what effect? How does it help America? And how does it help him to have one? Neither one of he us should be doing it. He still maintains his Mediterranean blue wait, wait, water And we I, have one that's too. That's all he's after. Very he's a war, war, war. That's all you men ever talk about. Ah, you give <laughs> if I may call John with the wind. Stuff which you say <laughs> all right. It's a waste of time and money for both of us. All the Damn. South has is cotton and arrogance. <laughs> Sister Simone, I can do all of Gone with the Wind, by the way. <laughs> massa, massa. Yeah. Lions, Kitty right Scarlet. Yeah. It's the only thing worth fighting for, <laughs> worth dying for. <laughs> no, the kids don't know Gone with the yeah, Wind. No, I know, seriously, it's uh, lost on them. Sister Simone, do you think that the coalition of religious support for Republicans will start to break down if Trump is the nominee? Well, that's a good well, question. Well, I, I think the religious support for Republicans has broken down, period, regardless of who the nominee is. Because what's happened is that the fact of the more progressive thought that it's seen more as an integration of all of the questions, not just sexual questions, become the questions that we ask at this time. The issues of income inequality, the issues of the disparities in our cities and towns, the issues of racism are at the heart of religious conversation. Mm -hmm. And that is changing how America embodies faith and how faith is involved politically. Mm. It's broken down, period. Mm. It's an interesting question because a lot of a lot of evangelicals who are supporting Donald Trump, who in previous eras would have been absolutely rigidly opposed to gay marriage, absolutely opposed to abortion, they're like, "Woo, Donald Trump! So what? We're doing it. We're, it's all about Trump." And and this is this to me is a is a sign that that the evangelical part of the Republican base has to do some self assessment and decide if they really believe in the things that they want to be but definitional for the party. To or defend if, them for a second, yeah. doesn't the Bible say, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's? They're saying, look, we're not voting for a preacher. We have a preacher. We're voting for a president. That's a different position. Their historical, their historical thing of disqualifying people flat out sure. who, who believed in, in, in gay marriage or who believed in, in, in abortion right. was, is suddenly completely gone with Donald Trump. Although well, not is, completely, but with a large faction, a large part of the the evangelical there, there part of the There is one correspondence between Donald Trump and much of the Bible on marriage, and that is it's okay for a guy to marry a lot of women. The, the Bible says that's okay, and Donald Trump says that's Polygamy, okay. Polygamy, right. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, one after another, a couple at a time. Yeah. <laughs> right, and Saudi Arabia. <laughs> we love Saudi Arabia, <laughs> and, you know... And bin, the older brides. Bin Laden uh, was the 20th of 55 children. It's always the middle kid. You know, who... <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everybody. You're a great audience.